All right, so here's an interesting thing. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, yeah, way. yeah. It's been so long since the three caballeros Jeez. cheered. Yeah, we haven't been we haven't together for a, a while. Yeah, we haven't. Been very busy. Does very busy. life imitate art? Or does art imitate life? In particular, I want to talk about the Bunny Boiler movie. The Bunny Boiler movie, the best. Uh, you know, what's it called? 1987, Fatal Attraction, starring... Fatal Attraction, starring Glenn Close and Michael and, Douglas. Yes, classic... Can that actually I forget, happen? I forgot the rabbit's name, though, but I don't think, I don't think much turned out. Fluffy, Fluffy the rabbit, who got boiled. Unfluffied. Yeah. Um, can that actually unfluffy. happen in real life? Do you think? Do you think? Seriously, is uh, this just the thing of movies, or can somebody actually be stalked and harassed and in such a serious accused. way? Yes. I mean, can a man yes. be stalked and harassed in such a serious way? Because we know from what everybody tells us, men do that to women all the time, and you know, that, that's not false, it's true, but can a man be stalked and harassed to the point of almost... Mental breakdown. Almost you'd think it was a movie. Right. Yes. yes. We happen to know it's true, and why is that? <laughs> so we have a case coming up where we're going to be very careful about not giving any information to disclose parties or anything of that nature, and I think... That's why we're holding our papers so close. Ultimately, when <laughs> when we're done with the case, we're gonna want to um, do a proper case review. But it was so f***ing unbelievable when stunning. we read... Stunning. when we read through a long series of messages between the parties that, um, in preparing certain materials that we filed in court, um, it was just really stunning just really, really stunning. And we want to talk about it because, you know, there's this reoccurring theme that we, we people ask us questions about and we speak about what happens to her or to him if it's a false accuser, but what happens to her? And we've talked about not much if ever anything happens, mm -hmm. but this is a really stark example of something that's really at the level of almost obsessional insanity with our client where he is facing a, a very serious allegation of sexual assault, sexual assault choking, and some other offenses. So, And as we go through some of this evidence, you know, what he faced leading up to the allegation, I, I think was actually pretty traumatic as well, to tell you the truth, because, you know, as we go through it, the, I, I couldn't imagine, and like I said to him, I, I couldn't imagine anything else he could have tried to do better to try to stop this person from entering his life. And there was nothing he could do. He was the victim of essentially a bunny boiler. Yeah, a total bunny boiler. So all these messages that we're going to talk about and then talk about um, our, our defense in this case occur just before, like for a long period of time and then just before the allegation itself. So let's set up for a moment what the allegation is so we can frame this for you to understand. So the complainant and our client got married in another country. And they had their marriage there, and uh, he came back to Canada, and the idea was to sponsor her under our uh, immigration regime and bring, bring her into the country. And over the course of uh, a bit of time, the relationship soured, and our client wanted to um, have a divorce. Almost right away, actually. It was just the first seven months while they were going through the process. Yeah, so, you know, within a short period of time, he, he wanted out and wanted a divorce. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but the applicant wound up, sorry, the, the complainant wound up coming to Canada and eventually wound up uh, in the same, in our client's home for a short period of time. One week. Yeah, and within that week, our client winds up being charged with sexual assault, with choking, um, and just a couple other things, but that's the most serious. And on the night, it's alleged that... Um, our, our client was intoxicated and had been continuing to drink through the night and um, that the complainant was attempting to put him to bed at some point and that he made certain threats about essentially sexually assaulting her and then sexual <laughs> and then threats about a cat. See? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, always, it's always the animal about a cat. Um, and that the complainant tried to stop him at some point from touching her and eventually it led to him dragging her to the bed, um, removing her clothing and forcing uh, sexual intercourse uh, on her. And then during or at some 
point of this encounter, strangling her. Well, now that's all really, you know, plausible that that could have happened, mm -hmm. but we have evidence in this case that shows that something drastically different was actually taking place. Yeah, so let's let's just go with this a tiny bit more. So the complainant also um, states a lot about our client allegedly having ADHD and some mental illness and taking pills, and so there's a lot of um, uh, attacking of him. Uh, and attacking his mental illness as some sort of basis as well for him wanting to have committed the Which, sexual pause assault. For a moment. Yeah. <laughs> I love doing that to you. <laughs> um, because if we were to do that to a complainant and talk about them being on medication for oh some God, sort of mental God. illness, absolutely not allowed. It would be some sort of a rape myth that, you know, saying, oh, mentally ill people can't be sexually abused. But but if the complainant wants to say that uh, the accused person is taking medication, all of a sudden it makes them apparently more likely to have sexually assaulted. And that's a really interesting point that I just wanted to pause to make. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so th this, is, this is essentially the complaint um, and, and his arrested and charged and on bail. Um, and uh, he becomes our client about eight, nine months ago he had other counsel, but he comes to us. And then we've, you know, fortunately we got from him this very um, robust source of messages. And They're shocking almost, actually. Well, I think we've used messages. a number of terms, but, um, <laughs> but what, what's important is the allegation, um, you know, of course there's no camera, there's no nothing. So that's the allegation in his charge and it's, it's set for trial. But then we have all these messages and and these messages now are built into our defense. Um, and it's extremely uh, illuminating because this shows a dynamic well prior to this moment that she comes in that's completely different than the complainant's dynamic and really attacks the complainant's credibility. But I'm gonna say this and then turn it over to you. This is where we run into some arguments with Crown attorneys and sometimes judges where they say, you know, all this, mess all this messaging is really nice, but it doesn't tell us about consent on the night in question, right? right. And that just goes to show how that's such a, a, a fallacy about how you deal with credibility. Because credibility, someone can just say, I, I'm lying about a sex assault, but there's so much more to credibility. And that's why context is important. Right. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to hand it over to you. And no, but just to follow through on that is like the Crown relies on context in order to put context to the complainant's narrative and the right. complainant's accusations. And yeah, when the accused wants to put Tries context to, story, to what they're yeah. saying, all of a sudden context becomes some sort of a dirty word. Right. Yeah. Well, it's still a dirty word and you just have to frame it properly. But but yeah, no, it, it's it just, it's so, it, it, it's so, ang it's so angersome. It's so so offensive to say that, you know, how is that relevant to consent? And it's like, it's not just about yeah. consent. It's about whether she's telling the truth that it ever happened that way or that there was consent or was not consent. And, and this is a stark, stark, stark example of why this type of evidence is crucial to prevent against a wrongful conviction. Yeah, okay, so why don't you set bad. up what the defense sort of anticipated evidence he was, is. He was putting it over to you. You've was he? It. Wait, I, want to, I want to hear your impressions. Well, first of all, I think we got to set up what the defense is and then go into the messages. So. Well, okay, well, I'll summarize it. Um, first of all, the, um, the accused in this case was terrified and literally used the word terrified of the complainant prior to her moving into his home and prior to her even coming to Canada. He literally says in one of the messages, I want out of this marriage and I am afraid of you in all caps on a message. Uppercase. All Take a look at some all of the messages caps. and you'll talk about that. Repeatedly. And she says, well, you're, um, you're uh, saying that you don't want to be married to me is proof to me that you're mentally ill. Therefore, you need me in your life. And he's like, no, you are the only problem in my life. I have no problems. Just please leave me alone. What can I do to, you know, I can't, I can't stop you from flying to Canada. But if you get here, like, I, I'm not going to be with you because I don't like you as a person. Like, you can't be more blunt, oh, no, more you brutal can't. with somebody than saying, I, you can't fix this because I simply don't like you as a person. That's what it goes beyond that. And then she just says... Just, just pick a couple out and then I want to frame Ha, ha, ha. 
She's it's, laughing at him the whole yeah, time. Yeah, it, you know the emails where he says, "I don't want you to come to Canada. Take if your you time. come to Canada, I will divorce you. I know I can't stop you from coming to Canada, but one more time, I will divorce you if you come to Canada." How yeah, you can't make it any more clear than that. And what does she do? She says, "You're uh, treating me like a slave." Right. How dare you make unilateral decisions, decisions. about our Who marriage? Who are you? Yeah. Are not existent. Yeah. Me first. Are not existent. Apparently, marriage. that's the definition of slave. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's bad. It's bad. So so just to regroup a little bit. I sorry. I got a little too excited. No, no. There. This is good. We got to put it in. <laughs> no, and I, you there's have a to. couple more I want you to pick out. Oh yeah. So so as we said, within a, a short period of time of them getting married, our client started to become very concerned about certain behavior. And as a result of that, he voiced his opinion that the marriage won't work and that he wanted to get a divorce and he did not want her to come to Canada. And these were both in discussions and messages. We have the messages. Yeah. This is very early on, well prior to the alleged date of the sexual assault. In fact, it was so bad that our client at some point stopped answering messages from the complainant. For five months. For about four to five months. Wow because he was so harassed by her and he had told her very clearly by that point on multiple occasions that he wanted to end the marriage and did not want her to come to Canada. He said that he is going to file for a divorce, was insisting he'd file on divorce, and he would not change his mind. And she tries to gaslight him um, when he says, I don't like you, I don't want to be with you, what do you want me to do? To which she says, are you seeing another woman? And more. There's also, I, There's I just want to hone in about... To get the There's so many quote. lines in But here. one of the things that really struck me was he said, can a man not get out of a marriage because he made a mistake? Yeah, that's in yeah. one of his messages to her. And she's just, she just comes back with ha ha ha. Yeah, I know. Total bunny boiler. Find the one about, because Diana mentioned this, about where, where she alleges he has a mental illness uh, and yeah. it's she necessary a few, times. A, few a, times. a few times and it's necessary for her to come here to help him with his mental illness yeah this just proves this like, just proves to me that you you're suffering and you need my, you need me by your side it's Give either gaslighting or it's just it's absolutely bizarre so again well, our client well she says she says um that through her through their parents she has learned he has mental illness problems and she is not supposed to listen to anything he says. Yeah. She's convinced herself that he's nuts. Which in court, that, would, she's be, just that would be hearsay well, yeah. evidence anyway, right? To which he responds. Through his parents, she learned he has yeah. mental illness. I have zero interest in being with you. I don't know you. Why are you forcing me? And he even offers her money. He, he says to her, how much money do I have to pay, pay you, you to stay away for from 35 me. months? Yeah. And he even offers to pay her for 35 months. What do I have to do? And her response to all of this is... Oh dear. Give me your address. No, no. <laughs> all of this shows all of this shows that you're depressed and that you really need me. Here. I know. <laughs> and constantly demanding that she get his address. So yeah. let's roll forward. So the complainant announces to our client in messaging that she's arrived in Canada. Yeah. Okay. Hello. And he, he, landed. He, he landed. First of all, responds by No, really? Yeah. <laughs> like in utter and complete shock. He actually shock. asked her for a photograph yeah, to prove did. that she was prove in Canada. Asked for a photograph to prove that she was here. And then immediately, what did he do? He messages her and said, he offered to pay her money for a flight back to where she came from, telling her in no uncertain terms that he did not want to be married to her and he would not allow her to come to his home. Pause. Pause. And that he would not allow her to come to his home. Which became a it gets prime better. Focus. It gets better. This her, just gets better. Her response is, "Well, you made me come to Canada and stranded me at the airport, you bastard." <laughs> yeah. After he literally said to her, "If you come to Canada, I probably won't even be in the province right. when you get there. I don't want you anywhere near me. I'm terrified." He used the word "terrified" right. like a good six times. I'm terrified of you. And then her response again, the same circle. You're delusional. I'm the only one that can help you, honey. Mm-hmm. It's I'm your like, wife, and you have to take care of and me. And I make good rabbit. I make good rabbit. Yeah, I'm a good bunny boiler. <laughs> well, he had two cats, God forbid. He is so desperate not to have her oh, at the, the home we had a that, that he goes to make arrangements for her to stay at a hotel. He, he makes arrangements for her to get there, and on the first night, she's messaging nonstop that she 
is going to be killed in that hotel <laughs> because there is a murder there or something else, and she's at high risk of dying there, okay? And he is just can't handle this at all, but he makes arrangements to meet her to then transport her to a second hotel he pays for. Because he still won't let her move in. And while house. he <laughs> is at the second hotel, and all this also is documented in messages, right. he serves her with divorce papers. At which time, her way of dealing with that is trying to literally seduce him. And he later on in messages says to her, you are seducing me and, act, and trying to rape me. Yeah. Pause, okay? And this is a first for me, okay? Like He literally, when, I, when talking to him, he was like, he was looking at the hotel window, deciding if he could jump out the window and then realized he had to somehow get around her to get out Because while in the room, he's actually <laughs> terrified and he expresses afterward in messages, I'm terrified of you yeah. and I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to be around me. He finally lets her into his home, but the condi one of the conditions because of that right. incident was that he said, you're not allowed to touch me. That was a condition on it. She wouldn't stay in the hotel, yeah. wouldn't leave him alone and under the pressure he was breaking. So he agrees to let her into the hotel, into his home. And again, okay. under the condition. She is not allowed to touch no him. No touching. It's all in messages. But yeah. before that, she does ask him whether uh, he could take her to a nice uh, restaurant and bring her chocolate too. She, she, yeah, she says, she's Why saying not? this. <laughs> oh, come pick me up and, and then bring, bring me some chocolate, chocolate too. Yeah. And she's trying to convince him that if you let me come to your home for a certain period of time, I'll be able to change your mind. And then she accuses him of blabbering incoherently with respect to whatever he types. Well, he continues he gets to drunk, respond. So he gets drunk one night during the one week that he has actually let her in his home. And then it's the cat thing we have to get to. But, but so the dialogue continues and it, he's expressing not only these conditions, but that I'm terrified of you. I don't want to be married. We are definitely going to get a divorce. This is just temporary for you at the moment. And he's made it very clear, and we, we said it again, he doesn't want to be intimate with her in any way, shape, or form. Okay? That is, that is, that is previous, Verbatim, documented lack of consent for him terrified being touched. Terrified of her. Yeah. Do not touch me. I'm te you scare me. I'm afraid of you. You terrify me. That's the framework right up until a day or so before the actual allegation of sexual assault. And on the night in question, the poor guy winds up getting drunk because this is just too much for him. Mm -hmm. And even while drunk... And they have separate bedrooms. Good point. At the home, he's not in the same room with her. He's in his room, gives her the guest room. And on the night in question, he's drunk. And we're going to be careful. We're not going to go into so much detail. But there is a sexual act performed. But it's our client's position that, in fact, he was drunk, went to bed, the complainant entered into his room and started seducing him where he's protesting. But intercourse winds up happening without his consent. But he's, he's, he doesn't want to push her away, doesn't want to get physical, gets aroused. And one thing and an act another. is completed. As we would say, too, too drunk to consent. But then he falls asleep. And in the next morning, he wakes up and goes, oh, f Oh, Jesus, I can't, I can't, f I can't believe this happened. Right. And he loses it. Yeah. And he loses it and says, I can't believe that happened. I can't believe you did that. We are definitely getting a divorce. I want you to go back. We're still getting the divorce because he's already getting, filed yeah. by Yeah. <laughs> and I may call the police. Right. And what happens? She decides to call uh, them first. She calls the police. Wait, wait, you forgot the funny. The c <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's so, it's so funny when it's not happening to you, right? Like, yeah, well, yeah. How, like, can, you imagine, can you imagine living this life where he can't get rid of somebody? <laughs> when he talks to her about him having been raped, she replies to the rape accusation with a thoughtful, confused emoji. Yeah. What? I know. What? We have text messages. What? We have text messages. We said you tried to rape me. What? And she, she just sends an emoji you. like this. <laughs> what the hell, honey? But okay, so so not only does she allege that he was assaulting her. <laughs> right. But he, he's... She, With an emoji. She <laughs> says that he threatened to pee in his cat's food or th pee in their throats or pee on her clothes. And then he was said he was going to poison the cats and all this other stuff. 
He had just got. By the way, they're his cats. They're his cats. They're his cats. He had them before she got there. Mind of course, mind I'm you. a dog lover, and I'm fed up with cats. But cats are cats. animals too. You know. Well, so so. And and you know, and, and it's his. Don't you have a cat? I have two cats. You want two? Want no, one? no, I absolutely free, don't. Free. I'll throw no. in the. I'll throw in the food. No, no, no. Thank you. When it, when the issues, my when the but the allegations is, are. Are, are, are bizarre. She hated they the are. cats. She threw out the cat the food, cat food saying that was, the cat food wasn't, wasn't according, um, to, her according to the the correct diet. I didn't know cat food got blessed, but apparently... I know. So, um, so she was like, you treat the cats better than you treat me. And then he had ended up, the poor cats ended up left with her. His parents had to go in because he, to try and take care of the Sorry, cats. where did the cats end up? Well, because well, he's out of the house. Place. Oh, well, that's revenge. And then the cats Keep the and, cats. See how you his like par- it. His parents had to come into town and fly in from out of the country and change the cat litter. No, no, but, but let, let, you know, we always say this, and everybody everybody knows what the consequences are, but he gets charged. He's out of his home, for which she has no real interest in at all, None. was not on title, had not contributed to it in any way, just sort of moved in within about less forced, than a week, forced her way, right? <laughs> week forced her way, and then yeah. gets exclusive possession by just charging him with sex assault and by the way oh here's the other thing to mention which is which is interesting but we always know this so in order for her to stay into canada of course there's a sponsorship right mm-hmm. so he's also saying in messages no 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 she's she's saying about yeah. you know you sponsored me you're obligated and he's going no 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 i i don't i, I didn't even complete the, i didn't complete the work completed, it's not been finalized yeah, yeah. Right, so she's worried about her ability to remain in Canada. But of course, if you lay a charge, it's yeah. a free ticket to permanent residency here. Yep. Yeah. So, so he's out of his home, away from his cats. Oh, well, that's a blessing. That's a blessing. Um, you know, out of his home, life turned upside down. Money paying on the home, secondary address, having to retain counsel, having to fight a trial. Now, I don't necessarily blame the police for not checking her phone. But we've said this before. As part of an investigation, it would be really nice if they would secure the phone of a complainant and just say, is there anything in here that we might want to look at? They do right. that in the UK. And not here. I know. And these messages are real. But, but they allow complainants to selectively choose certain right. messages, right? So, if, you know, if you're going to take certain messages, why not take them all? That's right. I, I agree. And fortunately, we were able to, uh, you know, extract these and authenticate them. So there is no dispute as to the accuracy or authentication of our messages so they're going in um hopefully but um it, it, it this is a perfect example of what is and 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 i'm still you know anticipating that somebody on the other side i don't think it'll happen but somebody on the other side might go well what does that have to do with consent <laughs> like right. well whose consent right. are you talking about because right. This is one of those cases, I mean, it's, it's the first for me where we're alleging that he's actually sexually assaulted. He was. But, but he, was, he was, and he was drunk, and, 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 he, and he was him. in his own room. But all this past history... There's nothing he could have done better to try and prevent her from moving into his house. But all this past no. communication in history, which is, we're telling you a real case, is, is a perfect example of why you need the background and the context because it lends coherence to what our client... Can you imagine... If we were never allowed to use these messages and her client went in to say, well, you know, I didn't want her in. I wanted a divorce. I couldn't stand her. On this night, I just allow her into the house for a few days because she won't stay in the goddamn hotel. I've already served her with divorce papers. I got drunk. She came into my room, seduced me and had intercourse with me. I woke up and I threatened her and now I'm charged. Can you imagine what a judge and a jury would probably do? They go, okay, thanks. (laughs) You know, because we have this bias. But we have like this great source of messages yeah. where when you read it, you go, yeah, it's totally believable. You can absolutely see what happened. And then the next question is this. Let's say um, it becomes really clear that she is a bunny boiler and a psychopath. And uh, he was the victim in this case. What happens to her? Oh, you've been waiting all night to say that, haven't you? Listen, I, let, let's say this, okay. okay. Let, let's, let's, let's be careful. Let's say, you know, let's take psychopath off of the the equation at the moment and, and I'll talk about challenges talk about bunny boiler but let's talk about Bunny's an orchestrated challenges. an orchestrated desire to get into Canada through marrying somebody and getting in under Im- our immigration system and doing everything necessary to stay within the country that's what we're talking about yeah and and we sort of engender this by the way we deal with these cases but what you're saying is what at the end of the day will happen 
Nothing, probably. The best result is he gets to move on with his life and try to be happy again. And, it, and it's interesting because we, I still get, we still get lambasted when we dare suggest that there are false allegations. It's that I'm accused of saying that I'm, I'm promulgating the myth, that we're promulgating the myth uh, that women lie about sexual assault. And even the Supreme Court of Canada in a recent case said, although it happens, it's rare. No, it's not rare with all due respect. It is statistically significant. And it's funny, you know, we were looking, we were watching, you know, a clip from a podcast of um, Scott Adams. Um, and, you know, BJ, you drew this to our attention, which was extremely helpful because um, Scott Adams was talking on this podcast about not only himself having been accused. It was a very interesting story about somebody from Canada who every three years is off it was, somebody medication. Canada, it was somebody from Canada who, who said that Keanu Reeves was a shapeshifter and impregnated her pretending to be her husband. Well, this sounds equally as ludicrous. Canadian and it, it's an accusation. It's one of a, you know, a number of accusations, but he hadn't even been to this city or place in Canada where this person is. But, you know, he makes an interesting point from a non-legal, you know, individual or an academic studying this because just anecdotally he talks about the vulnerability of people who are in positions of authority or politics and as they rise through the ranks become more and more vulnerable and not only are prone to allegations of sexual abuse, it does occur. In fact, they get blamed and, um, and it's a common feature. And what he was talking about as well, which was interesting anecdotally, is just think about for a moment if you know anybody who was wrongfully accused of a, of a sexual allegation. And he said, you know, myself alone, I can count two, three, or four people. And, and if you really stop and think, I mean, we're, we're in the business, so it's different. But he was suggesting that it is, uh, you know, far more common and incredibly misunderstood by the general public. He's absolutely right. And what's refreshing is it's not one of us talking about it. I know. Yeah. And, you know, Scott Adams, I mean, he's such an intriguing person. And, and like he said, he's in a position now where he can say whatever he wants to. And he's already right. been canceled, canceled and uncanceled so. and whatever. And, and so he's got this, this, this really refreshing approach to um, speaking his mind and um, laying things out. But his situation reminds me of, of something we've talked about before, too, which is that people think that celebrities get away with things. And the reality, like we're talking about bunny boilers, is yeah. that celebrities tend to become targets for people who become obsessed with them right. in some weird way. And that is why it's perfectly fine and okay to question allegations against celebrities because the reality is, is they're out there in and the public targets, yeah. and they can, they can become a, a target really easily well, and their lives can be destroyed. And Scott Adams, thankfully, is like people should watch how, he, how he's dealt with what happened to him. Um, because your life can be destroyed so easily without even getting a chance at going to trial to prove your Yeah, I mean, uh, very, you know, fortunate for him, is highly intelligent, has an excellent podcast. He has a new book out, What God's Debris, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so he has not only survived this, has become an important voice. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't happen to everybody because some people are quite broken by it. But it's not just celebrities, you know. Somebody who's rising through the ranks in business or rising through the ranks in politics or in some other areas becomes a target for almost um, social uh, assassination. And that the best way to commit social assassination is uh, uh, level uh, an accusation of sexual abuse. Correct. And then Oof. you're, you're yeah, toast. You're I mean, we have a case now where a, a, a client of ours who's a CEO with a company mm -hmm. yeah. for any number of years, the complainant mailed, mailed the undertaking uh, to the members of the board of directors and his toast Suspended. and so th so the point is it this happens across the board there is there is a particular vulnerability to people who are in positions of authority or power rising through the ranks as we said because they're they they will be canceled that's still live i mean it's it's very frightening but it exists mm -hmm. and um and it it is weaponized and i just think it's social assassination because you can, or socio, social economic assassination, you eliminate them. And then for all those who, who may not, you know, be at that stage in life, but have normal lives and happy lives, but they get targeted for other reasons, 
Um, and we have this across the board in our practice, and it's extremely dangerous. But it was just so interesting when you, you, know, you, refer, you referred this to me, BJ, to look at because it's kind of refreshing. We know, like, we often see and we deal with people who are advocates in the area talking about wrongful accusations, and they talk about their own uh, life experience, and they talk about how they've been through it and others, and all that's very valid. But what's interesting is to have it on a slightly different forum where somebody's not coming from it from a particularly aggrieved um, and passionate, no baggage. Like he's, just, he's not a lot of baggage he's to objective. it anymore. Yeah. It's more of an objective view to say, you know, this is something that we got to look at because to the normal common individual, they'd be like, what are you talking about? And the reality is it's much more common. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's, it's you know, 50, 60, 70%. But we found statistically significant about three out of 10, four out of 10, we find that there's palpable evidence of fabrication. Wow. But it's refreshing to see that this discourse is going on now in slightly different forums with people of different backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, who doesn't take it so personally and who's just able to talk about it. You know what I always say, I, I hate talking about numbers because this is all about people. And you know, every circumstance is, is um, unique to itself. And we need to understand that things do happen that you don't expect. And, you know, it's important for people to to speak about their personal experiences anecdotally. But, um, you know, but the important thing is for people to, to, to not jump to conclusions and to realize that, these, like this case we talked about today, these insane things, mm -hmm. these aren't just things you see in movies. No, God, no. Yeah. So, so I guess to circle back and, and to end this is, th this is real. And, and, and we've often talked about case studies that are, it's real evidence. It's, we didn't make it up. Yeah. This is real evidence that we were able to gather from extractions or working with the client or private investigators or whatever. It's real evidence. This is, this is a real case. Um, and all the more reason that there should be actually real statistics and studies and in ramifications for false accusations. There should be. And there are no consequences for it. There's nothing, there's no follow up, there's no nothing. We have another case with a video, literally a video. Oh, yeah, the one. client was so ashamed. Yeah. It took like pulling teeth to get the video. And the video, it's over. It's over, yeah. Completely exonerates the. It, 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 They're it, having it, consensual sex the, on yeah. directing the camera. Holding the yeah. camera, the <laughs> metadata, it's the Airbnb. Everything. The yeah, complaints yeah. directing the camera. So it's like, it's shocking. William and it's like, if, the, if we can achieve anything with this yeah. podcast, anything, it's that false accusations are real. Whether it's made by women, men, whatever gender you are, false accusations are real. And we got to take it seriously. And we, there has to be now incentive for funded studies and then for authorities to take this seriously and to prosecute people who make these false allegations. And honest talking. So here's to Scott Adams. We'll have a simultaneous sip. No, it was, it was, a, it was, uh, so thanks for sending it to me. It was very good. I'm going to, I've watched some of them, but I'm going to watch others. Simultaneous for so. Scott Adams. And don't forget to, uh. The pillow. Oh, pillow talk. Pillow, pillow. Like, comment. Simultaneous sip. I got to buy another pillow. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Yay. Have a good night, everybody. Take care.